Interesting footage here on Nation TV yesterday here in Thailand. We've got two presenters who are basically introducing the thing or the person, or whatever you want to call it, who is probably going to do them out of a job. So the lady, uh, I think her voice has been used for this new AI presenter. And uh, they've just got a sample here of what it might look like with various news uh, articles around the world at the time. And I have to say, uh, very unconvinced, just very robotic. But we're going to have a talk more about that later in the program. Hi, and welcome to our Friday TNT. Uh, still in the wars, this hand uh, very swollen and very painful, but they've given me a million pills to take, so uh, I should be okay. A uh, live program tomorrow morning, and uh, then we've got Grumpy Old Men with Steve on Sunday. But let's get started with today's main stories here. And a Thai PBS World reporting falling debris causes suspension of Bangkok's Yellow Line service. Now, this is one of the new automated services, so there's no driver. And the elevated yellow line monorail service in Bangkok is suspended until midnight, that was last night, to allow for repairs and a thorough inspection following an incident in which metal debris fell from the track onto traffic below. And the industry minister says if this happens again, the minister has stated that he would review the contract and those found to be responsible could face penalties. And according to the Rail Transport Department's inspection report issued at about 8.30am yesterday morning, the conductor rail between Kalantan and Si Udum stations fell onto the walkways, causing loose metal debris to fall onto the ground, resulting in the suspension of services on the entire line, officials had to evacuate passengers stranded in two carriages and uh, the falling debris damaged one minivan, a sedan and a motorcycle. A bit more information from an article in the Bangkok Post saying that the yellow line monorail runs between La Prao and Sam Rong. The service started in July last year and Thursday's incident was the second mishap on the monorail system from which a wheel tumbled on January the 2nd and struck a taxi on the road below. So not sure whether the driverless uh, train issue has got anything to do with this. I'm not sure if a driver could have prevented this from happening. Just looks like a shoddy workmanship in the installation of this system originally. And to a few stories, I suppose we could put this under the heading of people behaving oddly. Go to cowshodenglish.com. Naked Chinese man is saved on Bangkok police station rooftop. And yesterday, Lumpini police officers attempted to cope with an incident involving a naked Chinese man. He was 59, risking to jump from a five-story building within the Lumpini police station in Wireless Road. Uh, he was Mr. Fu Yu, 59. And officers sought the help of an interpreter for negotiations. And they then had to rush to spread out an air cushion in case the other uh, Chinese man jumped down. Here's uh, a quick bit of video on top of the Lumpini police station of the Chinese man naked on top of the station. And after more than two hours, Mr. Fu Yu jumped into the water tank. The police had to crawl in and help bring him out before handing him over to volunteers. Now, he was originally arrested on Thursday at 2 a.m. by Lumpini police. Officers detained him for a drunken rampage from the Boulevard Hotel on Soy Circumvent 5, placed him in a detention cell. And that was until 4 p.m. when he regained consciousness and was questioned. He used a translation app to communicate with the police, but when they asked him about his relatives who could pick him up, he walked away and went onto the roof naked. And the story says the officials will await the findings of a medical and mental examination. Uh, and if there's nothing unusual, he will be charged and uh, deported from the country. People behaving strangely. Number two, this reported in thetiger.com. Up in Napechibun, cannabis-induced hallucination triggers police chase. And a 23-year-old man experienced a hallucinatory episode after consuming cannabis, leading to a high-speed chase and subsequent arrest by local police. Apparently, the man panicked under the influence, resisted and attempted to flee, resulting in a physical altercation. The chase ended when a Amorn, exhausted, was apprehended by the pursuing officers. And in his statement, the man confessed to consuming a large amount of cannabis, which he believed made him paranoid and someone was out to harm him, prompting his desperate attempt to escape. 
and to people behaving strangely, or in this case, badly. This is number three. We go to CalsodEnglish.com. Thai woman beaten by Austrian husband flees to Temple. And a 53-year-old Thai woman named Neng has filed a complaint with the Nong Pru police, claiming she was beaten by her Austrian husband, and she was forced to flee to a temple. Uh, she met her husband while working as a housekeeper in Thailand. They fell in love and have been together for five years. But she says her husband is a heavy drinker and becomes violent when he's drunk. And he's been physically abusing her for the past five years, but she's endured it out of love. But in December last year, Ms. Neng was hospitalised with a broken arm after being beaten by her husband. He did not visit her in the hospital and continued to abuse her when she returned home. Another example there of abuse. And then on March the 10th, Ms. Neng returned home in Chombri after her husband begged for forgiveness. But he immediately beat her again, this time hitting her in the ear so hard she could not hear. And she was then taken to a government house complaint centre for assistance. And strangely, that's where that story ends. No reports of the Austrian man being arrested, but uh, we hope to follow up with something similar to that report uh, very soon. To some other news today on the Friday TNT, thank you for dropping in. And viral video shows murky water flowing into Na Jomtien Beach. And in a recent Facebook video which was posted on Wednesday, murky water was seen being discharged into Na Jomtien Beach, sparking widespread criticism and attention from relevant authorities. Similar stories like this used to happen in Phuket all the time with these sort of estuaries washing into the, uh, the West Coast beaches and the black water, as it was described, always uh, explained away by officials as, oh, I've got nothing to worry about here. Now let's see what excuse these uh, officials have. And the viral clip triggered outrage with Facebook users suspecting that the water might be wastewater and could potentially pose health risks to swimmers. And here you are, you can make up your own mind. This is the other uh, clearly black water, very murky water, flowing down into the Na Jomtien beach. Now, it's not only Na Jomtien where this sort of thing happens. From time to time, it happens at beaches right around Thailand. But personally, I wouldn't go swimming in that, and I probably wouldn't re recommend that you do either. We go to our next story. This is from Kalsod English on their Facebook page. And cyber police officers and more than 30 officers searched four locations in Nakhon Si Tamarat province. And this happened yesterday to capture a large Chinese call centre gang that had illegally set up base to scam both Thai and Chinese citizens. Authorities detained the Chinese leader. Uh, he wasn't 71. That's uh, 71 Thai and Chinese suspects and seized over 200 computers. And they're holding a full uh, press announcement about these arrests today. But these online scam gangs moving right into Thailand, not only on those border areas, and clearly something that both the Chinese and the Thai officials and police would like to close down. We go to ThaiPBSWorld.com. Worsening air pollution in eight northern Thai provinces, to say the least. Yesterday, the situation was very bad. And we'll check out uh, today's situation in just a moment. An airborne PM 2.5 dust reached the health-threatening red level in eight northern provinces yesterday morning, with Me Hong Son being the hardest hit. And PM 2.5 uh, levels in 25 other provinces also exceeded the safety threshold or orange level. But air quality in Bangkok today, at least a bit of good news, is described as good to very good. Which sort of leads to this Chiang Mai hotel bookings at 30% as air pollution concerns loom, uh, hopes for Songkran boost. Well, not much looming going on this uh, problem with the hotel bookings because of the air pollution in the north of Thailand is obviously something that's been going on for the past three months already. And the story says the Northeastern Thai Hotels Association advisor publicly revealed that the statistics for hotel bookings in Chiang Mai were only 30% full compared to the start of April from the previous year. However, it was expected that the occupancy number would surge back to 70% during the Songkran Festival. So Songkran up in Chiang Mai being a big event, sometimes the festivities going on for several days, 
Let's hope that they can see who they're throwing the water at as we go to check our iqair.com this morning. It shows Chiang Mai today, number four in the world's most polluted cities. And if we have a look at uh, the circle there, this is the north of Thailand. And not only do we have orange and red areas, but also purple and dark purple, which is considered hazardous air pollution. And the vast majority of that caused by the forest fires, not only in northern Thailand, but in those border areas. When you're trying to encourage people to come to Thailand, these are the stories you don't want to see. Pilot on Phuket, New Delhi flight sacked for flying under the influence. This is reported by the PhuketNews.com. And the pilot was doing a training flight for a new captain, according to the Times of India. And Air India said, we have zero tolerance of these things and have taken very strong action of not only terminating his service, but are also planning uh, to file an FIR as operating a flight under the influence of alcohol is a criminal act. Now, the article doesn't actually explain what FIR is. I'm sure some of you will know. Please explain in the comments section. And pilots and cabin crew operating flights within India must undergo pre-flight tests as no alcohol is available, served or sold on domestic flights. But uh, post-flight tests are conducted on flight crews operating international flights where alcohol is available. And in the first six months of 2023, 33 pilots and 97 and cabin crew members had failed their breathalyzer tests. Well, glad they were detected and good to see breathalyzer tests on the, uh, the flight crew and the flight attendants. Now to this nation story and reported in the nation, nationthailand.com, AI-generated Natcha and Nichan set to take Nation TV by storm. And Nation TV is introducing what it claims are Thailand's first news reporters generated by artificial intelligence. Named Nacha and Nichan, the two will bring fresh news to viewer screens from April 1 onwards. April 1 is April Fool's Day. And the Nation TV's MD said AI technology has been adopted in several businesses and industries, including television and mass media. News agencies in China and India are already using AI in data analysis to ensure fast and accurate news presentation to the public. And as a leading news station focused on innovation, Nation TV Channel 22 saw an opportunity to use generative AI to increase our news presentation capability. And we've used AI to create female news reporter Natcha and her male counterpart Nichan, who will be the first news reporters in Thailand. Uh, maybe the first regular AI news reporters, certainly not the first news reporters. And the two AI reporters will be piloted from April the 1st. Uh, Nation TV also aims to use AI reporters as brand ambassadors, as well as expand the use of generative AI in other roles, such as influencers and as MCs of events and virtual conferences. So as I said earlier, these two reporters basically talking themselves out of a job, uh, although I'm not quite as uh, keen as they seem to be about this idea of AI presenters, and I don't really think it's going to catch on. I've got a funny feeling people actually like to see real people read the news, all the nuances, the winks, the nods, the uh, odd comment here and there, and I'm not sure if this AI thing is really going to take what do you think so i suspect this is really just a bit of a novelty uh, surely people aren't going to be uh, just waiting every day to tune in to watch their favorite ai presenter uh, obviously they can create a very uh, pretty and flawless looking presenter both male and female but does this lend any extra credibility to nation tv does it make it more watchable uh, do you think this is a good idea? So, interested to hear in your comments, please comment at your will in our comment section uh, somewhere below there. Uh, I'm going to take my hand and have a bit of a rest. Hopefully, you're going to have a good Friday. We'll see you tomorrow for our live program. Where we can talk about some of these uh, uh, stories we did today in that program. And on Sunday, we've got Grumpy Old Men with Mr. Steve Ross. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.